the next um, facilitator we'll be having, the next speaker is um, Abiodun Steven Ijeluola, and he's a passionate educator, is an instructional designer, is a researcher with over a decade of experience in teaching and professional teacher training. He has had a solid educational foundation and professional experience across four continents. I mean, this is amazing. Four different continents, including Africa, Asia, Europe, and North America. Stephen has a Master's of Arts in Educational Technology from the University of Tartu, Estonia, and a Bachelor of Arts in Education, English Education from the Obafemi. Um, Awolowo University in Nigeria. He is currently pursuing a PhD in instructional technology. I mean, if this was a physical event, this is a place where, you know, I would ask you to clap. <laughs> but then you can still drop your clapping emojis <laughs> at the James Madison University. Um, through education and technology, he has been able to um, give positive difference to people's lives. His research interests include digital device in education, game-based learning, computational thinking in education, technology integration in classroom, and professional development for teachers. I mean, I can see somebody saying greatest Ife. I wanted to say that Ife people, why? Always, they always want to. Ife is actually, <laughs> Oba Femi Awolowo is um, a university in Nigeria for those who are, you know, joining us from outside the country. But let me just put a disclaimer here. Ife people, they are always, ah, let's know. My people, great in your eyes, are you here? Great, great, great. <laughs> All right, please let, join me as we be. Welcome, Mr. Biodo Steven in general. This man is such a boss attitude. And trust me, you cannot afford um, to miss this session. And once again, I want to remind us that we'll be dropping the link for the certification at the end of the meeting. So make sure you stay put and stay joined. Thank you so much, Mr. Biagisti. I'm so glad to be here this morning. And um, it gives me a great pleasure doing what I love doing best. <laughs> so, Mr. John has actually talked about everything that we might want to hear in terms of the theoretical part of this uh, training. Uh, I will be going a little bit into the practical side. So that's why I call it exploring the world of AI tools, exploring the world of AI tools. Uh, quickly, let me uh, ensure that I, I can share my sound. All right. Okay. So to begin with, I would like to start by making a disclaimer, not something that big, but to quickly let us know that this training, for example, while, while we were reviewing the uh, applications, we saw a lot of people talking about AI as if we are going to be, be coming here to teach how to use robots. So <laughs> this training, it's not going to be about uh, uh, robots or a big uh thing like human being that will come into your class and be working and be playing with your student well we are not there yet and we hope to get there but before we get there let's deal with the one we have now so we will not be talking about uh robots and we will not be talking about virtual assistant like you can see here i know a lot of people have been thinking about when are we going to start having virtual assistants in our classroom and you can see this i know if you come across this lady you will believe she's human, right? But that is the level at which artificial intelligence has gone to now. Let me quickly play this 30 seconds or uh, yeah, uh, video so we can see how it works. Dear members of the media and the public, I welcome you. My name is Victoria Shi. I have been created by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine using artificial intelligence to provide you with timely and high quality information on consular affairs. I am a digital person. That means that the text you hear was not read by a real person. It was generated by artificial intelligence. I will carry out a number of tasks. First and foremost, I will inform the public providing timely and verified information from Ukraine's consular service. All right. So, 
she said her name is she, something she, Victoria she. And she looks like someone's sister. <laughs> but interestingly, she's AI. <laughs> so, but this is not where we are going today. We are just uh, beginning with AI as educators. So we've not gotten to this stage. We know other people in other Western world might have gotten there, but I hope we get there soon. So having made that disclaimer, let's see. I want us to start from here. This session, I will be giving us uh, a background of how to use some tools, AI tools, to prepare for our lesson, to prepare engaging activities, uh, to come up with strategies for our teachings and every other thing. And to better help us, we've come up with this framework as Teacherpedia, we'll be, we, want, we will be giving out this slide after now. So you don't need to take note. If, I mean, you don't need to be writing everything or if you want to screenshot, you might not want to stress yourself because we will share the slide after now. We call the framework create AI, create AI. So what, why do we created this? Why did we create this uh, framework? Number one, we don't want you to just jump into the world of AI without having a strong preparation, without having a, I mean, a, a document or something that serve like a guideline for you. So you have the acronym create C R E A T E A Y there. I mean I there. Uh, the, the first C stands for clarify content objectives. As educator, like some people will say, Maslow before Bloom. After you must have understood uh, understood uh, your students' needs, you've done your analysis, you've understood what you want to teach them, and, and you've come up with your objectives. The first thing you want to ensure is anytime you are using AI, don't use it, don't use it blindly. It goes along with your objective and the needs of your student. Good. Research AI tools. Please, whenever you are using AI, make sure you do your research and you ensure that the one that can serve the purpose for coming online to use AI is the one you are making use of. See, today, AI technologies, AI tools, they are like, the way they are, I mean, we'll talk about that later. It's like when you are going to the market and you are not sure of what you are going to buy. So you can just go there and buy anything. Are you getting what I'm saying? So please make sure you research it very well. Don't just jump on any AI tool, especially for your own privacy and for the privacy of your students. I will mention that later. Then explore ethical considerations. Explore ethical consideration. I want you to understand that, like I mentioned on copyright, I would also like to mention on biases. Now, AI is not human, we've established that. Whatever you get from AI, it's coming back to you based on what has been imputed into the AI. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So AI would not automatically come up with idea. Whatever AI comes, it's like it's gathering information from all across the internet. And that is what is bringing back to you. Now, let's underline this. Most of this information on the internet, they are put there based on individual biases. Now, I'm a black man. When I put information on the internet, I would put it based on my skin color, right? So if someone from Mexico or someone from Brazil or from someone from the United States goes online to check information and AI come to touch what I put there, I can assure you, by the time you go online, the information you are going to, the person will get will be based on my bias. I'm a black man. I'm a man. I'm a, I'm a man, I'm black, I use glasses, I don't have beards. So most of the things that will be coming will be based on my identity. So please be careful whenever you are using AI, understand that AI is not human and whatever it's giving to you will be based on information that has been given to it. Garbage in, garbage out. Now let's move forward. 
adapt content generation, utilize AI to generate content that is tailored to students' learning needs. I've mentioned that. Make sure you always check and recheck that the content you are getting from AI align with the needs of your student. It's, it's, it's like you are going for a party and the music is so sweet. You can get caught up in that euphoria of the music, right? The same thing AI. If you are not careful, at the point you will, you, you will realize that you are no longer doing the thing related to your objective and the preferences of your students. So please, you need to see caution. Another one is test content quality. Ten test content quality. Sometimes you will get some information that you are not so sure of. Why not go online and check and recheck? Why not go to the library and check and recheck? If you know you are not yet getting something, why not call a colleague or a friend that you know knows better than you do? Can you let me go through this thing that I got from the, uh, that, that was generated by AI? Please, let's, let, let's see uh, that caution. Then uh, another one is enhance engagement. Make sure anytime you use AI, you are using it to engage your student. I'm a fan of accessibility and engagement in the classroom. I, 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 I preach no student is left behind. That's my, that, that's my number one uh, 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 philosophy. No student is left behind. And number two is student must be engaged. So they must be engaged fully. So you can't be in my, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher. You can't be in my class and you see a dot class. No, my class will never be dull. So whenever I want to go on AI to use it for my, to support my teaching, it will be to engage my student. In which way can I engage my student? And this is what we are trying to let you know by giving you this framework that please make sure that the framework, I mean, your, 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 your engagement with AI encourages your student's engagement with your content, then assess impact. We are all teachers. We should learn to evaluate. Okay, I used this AI last week. Did they really produce results different from what I've what I, I mean, what I've been getting before now? If the results is not obvious, stop using AI. Are, are we getting it? Then the last one, iterate and improve. There will always be research coming up every day. There are if you look at the AI technology, they are updating every day. Make sure you are updated as a teacher. Now, when we were in College of Education those days, they would tell us, as a teacher, two things, two characteristics are, I mean, I mean, peculiar to you. Number one, you must read at all time and you must learn always. Then you teach always. I mean, th that's like three now. So this ensures that you are updated at all time. So having said this, Let's move here. I'm trying to be fast because we are going to spend some time using those AIs. So if you have your laptop by your side or your phone, some of this AI, we, we consider that uh, while, while preparing for this, we are going to be using AIs that are mobile friendly. They are free. And I mean, you don't need to, you don't need to go too far before you know how to use them. Now, I mentioned this uh, earlier on that AI market is oversaturated. It's oversaturated. And I mean it. It's, it's every day, every day. I mean, a lot of companies are coming up, bringing up new AI technologies. That is why you need to be careful as a teacher, as an educator, as a lecturer, as a professor. You don't just use any AI. Now, look at all these AI technologies that I have in this uh, word cloud. I can tell you that this is not up to 1% of all the AI technology we have in our world today. This is not up to 1%. It's not up to 1%. And what I have, what I have here is up to maybe over, over 20 or over 30. And it's not up to 1%. So as a teacher, you need to be focused. Know what you are doing before you select any AI technology. So we have Wobot, Codex, Geo, Alexa, I mean, all of them there that they are not really relevant. So don't just jump on anyone. But for the purpose of this training, we selected five that we have been using and we have used very well. We've introduced it to educators. And that is what we'll be sharing with you today. Now, I'm going to make a a comment quickly before I go there. This training will be based solely on how instructors, teachers, 
professors can use AI to support their teaching. We will not be dealing with how children can use AI. We will not be dealing with how children can use AI. We are going to have a master class coming up next month, which is going to be paid. It's not free. So if you want to learn how children can use AI, uh, we encourage you to register for that. Uh, 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 Adebola will mention, uh, we'll talk more about that at the end of the uh, training. That At that area, we will delve it fully into how students can use AI. We will go into ethical uh, 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 and responsible use of AI by children. How we will use AI with children without running into problem. You can be sued. You can, I mean, don't let me, I mean, as a teacher, I don't, I wouldn't want you to run into trouble. So please, for this, we won't want to give that free of charge because it will take, it's not something of one hour, two hours, three hours. We will spend time sitting down together to learn that next month. So uh having said that, today we'll be focusing on these five tools, AI tools. The first one is ChatGPT. I know nearly every one of us know ChatGPT. It's the most common one. <laughs> if you ask, oh, which AI are you using now? Everybody says ChatGPT. I was, I, I, gave, a, I gave a seminar uh, at a conference uh, in March this year. Uh, I mean, about two months ago. And I was so surprised that when I mentioned Cloud AI, this one, Cloud AI. Nearly most of these professor uh, lecturers, they didn't even, they've never heard about it. So I know we are all in it together. They are coming every time. And the next one is Microsoft Copilot. And the next one is Google Gemini. And the last one is Magic School. Now, let me quickly say this. I will take some time to walk with us through chat GPT, but I won't spend too much time on cloud AI. I will just give us some unique features that it has. I won't spend too much time on Microsoft Copilot, but I will just give us some unique features that we can use. I won't spend too much time on Google Gemini. I will give us some unique features, but I will spend, I mean, some time on Magic School. And I know every educator here today will love Magic School. You will love Magic School. But before we go into that, let's consider something. Have you ever heard about prompts? Have you ever heard about prompts? As an educator, for you to have good, make good use of AI, you need to have a very good, brilliant understanding of prompts. If not, you will be using AI just like you are using Google. And I can tell you, AI will give you 1,001 information better than Google. I won't say more than that. So what is prompt? It's like information that you give to AI. So I write here, here Prompt is what you tell the computer to get a response. It could be a question, instruction, or just something you type in. So if I say, if I just type, hello, that is a prompt. And I, we are going to start with that. So when, by the time I get on chat GPT, the first thing I will do is, hello. And you see the response. That is a prompt. Saying hello prompted chat GPT to respond to me in one way. Now. The prompt guides the computer on what to say. If the prompt is clear, please underline this. If it is clear and well-written, the AI tool's response will be better. But if prompt is confusing or unclear, the tool might not give the right answer. So it is important to give good prompt to get good results from AI. Now, if you look at this side, this is a screenshot from ChatGPT. This is a screenshot from ChatGPT. Anytime you go into ChatGPT, this is what you first see. And they, pro they, pro they provide you with some prompt. Create a workout plan. Give me tips. Plan, design. Now, I want you to understand this. Prompt, most of our prompt starts with verb. 
And most of the time we use action verb, active verbs, create, develop, generate, evaluate, assess, bring, rewrite, re uh, tune. I mean, things around that. Now, unfortunately, we won't go deep into prompts because that's another one day session on its own to take us a lot. Now, let me just give some example, I mean, some sample prompts. Like I said at the beginning, we are going to have this slide. So you don't need to, I won't be going through everything because I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have like 20 here. So from this first slide and the second slide coming after this. So, but for example, let me say, create a lesson plan for teaching basic phonics and letter recognition for kindergarten class. That is a prompt. Describe a fun and engaging activity for teaching counting and number recognition. That is a prompt. Let me go to the last one. Describe a mindfulness or relaxation activity that helps children regulate their emotion and focus their attention. That is a prompt. If you have worked, I mean, if you are working in international school or if you are worked there, you understand what that prompt is talking about. At some point, you want your student to calm down and you are out of idea. AI is your friend. So let me go to the next one. So I have a lot of prompts here. Let me pick one at random. Okay. Develop a lesson on community helpers. Exploring different occupations and their roles. Uh, plan a cooking activity where children can help prepare simple snacks uh, or treats. So all this. So this is not just complete in itself. You will need to refine, retune, rewrite until it meets your expectation. Now, I've said that before now. We need to understand that if you tell, for example, develop a literacy activity incorporating storytelling and and picture books. Now, do you know if you give this to AI, garbage out, I mean, garbage in, garbage out, AI will give you a random, AI will give you a random output. Now, let's refine. You can tell AI, rewrite it by indicating, I mean, you can say rewrite, focusing on primary five children. Did you see that? It's different from the random. So AI will rewrite it again. That's another prompt. Maybe by the time it gave you the answer to that one, it gave something that it's not unique to your local government. Are you getting it? Now, you can now see, give me more examples that are related to Accra community, if you are from Ghana, or Nairobi community, if you are from Kenya, or Abuja community, if you are from Nigeria. Are you getting it? I said, by the time you rewrite and rewrite and rewrite your prompt, you might have like five iterative attempts, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes I get as much as 20 until I get something that I'm interested that really meets my expectation. So having said that, let's explore. Let's explore. So I will be starting, if you can see my screen, I will be starting with uh, ChatGPT. Let's do something with this. So the first thing we want to do is to, okay, someone says create. Let's greet our ChatGPT. Hi. Can we see the response? It says, hello, how can I assist you today? Now look at look at my look at my prompt. I have a student in my class who is eight years old and he's finding it hard to read simple English words. 
could you please uh, give me suggestions on how to engage him? Now, look at this. This is a prompt from me. Now, I'm trying to solve a problem in my class. Let's see how ChatGPT is going to react. Is as fast as using both. And it's done. Less than five seconds, or I mean, less than 15 seconds. So now it's for me to look at it, okay? Engaging an eight year old student who is finding it difficult to read simple English words can be challenging, but rewarding. Here are some suggestions to help. It gives me suggestions, right? Okay, I can say, now nah, let me say this. Sometimes we are Africans, let's be polite. Don't say because it's robots. Let's do it, thank you. <laughs> so I just said thank you. And it says, you are welcome. If you have any more questions or need further assistance, feel free to ask. I'm here to help. Okay, now I'm back. Do you think these suggestions can be used with other students? If not, could you suggest suggestions, I mean, sorry, ideas that can be generated, I mean, that can be generalized, right? Something like that. I'm just bringing that from my head. Don't mind me. It might not be accurate, but let's see. So it's talking to me now. Why many of the suggestions can be effective for a wide range of students? It is important to recognize that every learner is unique. Thank God. ChatGPT knows that. And may respond differently to various strategies. Here are some additional generalized ideas that can be beneficial for engaging students learning. So it comes up with a lot of ideas again. Now I can say, this is good. You don't, you might not want to say this. Okay, I, 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 I will use one of the prompts in the chat. Uh, let me just finalize this. I mean, you can go, I'm talking about prompts now. You can go deeper, deeper using, as if you are talking with an assistant or your HOD or your counselor, I mean, your mentor. So you can say, could you turn this into a lesson plan to cover for three weeks. Let's see. It says certainly. Here is a lesson plan. Oh my God. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, Oh, all right, let's see. Now, I think this is scattered. I don't like the way it's scattered. I can say kindly put them in a table with, uh, okay, let's just put it that way. I don't want to go too far. All rules and color. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's see. Can you see? So it's helping us week one, week two, week three. So we have it well arranged. So you can also go further and say something like, uh, can you include outdoor activities to support this? Let's see. Absolutely. It's always saying yes, yes, yes. But we are going to get to a place where we will hear no. So we have outdoor activities here. It's already created it. Now, trust me, like when, when my profile was read, I've been in this 
teaching game, I mean, teaching job thing for over a decade. I started teaching, I mean, my first experience in classroom as a student teacher was in 20, 2002. Yeah, 2002. And I can tell you, one of the, one, I don't know of now, because I'm not actively in the classroom now, but one of the hardest thing for us as teacher was to get ideas like this. To bring things like this into lesson plan. You know, later I started working in well-advanced school and they already prepared the lesson plan for us. But I know many of us, we are not in that category. So imagine, I remember my when I was working in a school, I will not mention any school now. When I was working in a school in Lagos State, they would tell us to prepare lesson plan for the next three weeks. For the next three weeks. And I'm very sure some schools are still doing it now. Hey, find rest. <laughs> that is why AI is here. Now, uh, to, before I move on, let me quickly copy one of the prompts here. This is from Kevin. Thank you so much, Kevin. Let's quickly put Kevin's. Kevin says, create a fifth grade lesson plan on science lesson on functions of roots. The lesson should be 30 minutes. Oh, my God. I love this. Now, let's see. Certainly, trust AI. So we have lesson title, Exploring the Function of Roots, Grade Level, Fifth Grade, Subject Science, Duration, 30 Minutes, Objective, Student Will Understand. Now, you remember I told you you need to be careful. As a teacher, you should understand that this is a wrong objective. You know why that is wrong? You can't measure student understanding by just saying understand. I mean, your objective should, should be measurable. So students will be able to create, explain, define, decorate, draw. So now we have a problem with this objective. We can say, thank you. But I want the objective to be measurable using active verbs. I mean, is it active verbs? I have my friend here that's, that knows English better than I do. So <laughs> maybe you can help me. Active verbs, right? Yeah. So let's see. Of course, let's revise. Students will identify and explain the functions of roots in plants. So you see that. So I want to leave ChatGPT for now. So please, uh, like I mentioned, we cannot explore all this uh, in this session because it's going to take a lot of uh, time. But let's quickly move to the next AI tool. Now, I will quickly talk about ChatGPT. Now, if you look at the way I'm using my ChatGPT, it says something here. It says sign up. If you press sign up, it will give you some options. You can sign up with Google and it's free. Microsoft and Apple. Now, by the time you log in, you can see that everything that we did has cleared off because I didn't sign in. So by the time you log in with your account, everything will be there. You can come tomorrow and still revise it. So sometimes I do a kind of trend. Is it trend or trend? Yeah, whichever one of charts. I can use one chart for like one week, two weeks. So for example, maybe we are done with maybe, hello, for example, this is a chart. So if I'm logged in, it will save it here. So I will start a new one, new chart. I will find that one here. So every new thing I'm doing, it will be loading them here. So I want us to take note of that. Now, if you look up here, this is chart GPT 3.5. So we have GPT 3.5 free of charge. So there are some things that it does, but are limited. But as a teacher, Please, I know our salary is not that much. Let's just stay with this 3.5. $20 a month is a lot. So 
But if you know you are buoyant, you are in uh, the school that where the children are paying 42 million per semester, I mean, per session or whichever one, and you as a teacher, you are earning 3 million. Uh -huh. Please come and get this one. Charge GPT-4. Aha, uh -huh. so this is good for you. It will be refined and you see better things there, better features, I mean, other features there. You'll be able to create image with DAL, D-A-L-L-E, uh, L-L-E something. All right. So that is all. And you will also be able to, you'll be able to upload document. Now, I want to move to the next one, which is Cloud AI. It's spelled C-L-A-U-D. E dot A I. I'm there. So Cloud AI is another AI technology. I think there is a message I'm interested in. Let me quickly check it. The information on Chavis needs to be reconfirmed because it can make error sometimes. Yes, I already I established that. Thank you, Mariah Abbas. I I I I established that. It, it has a lot of, not error, yeah, let's say error, but mistakes, errors, biases, mess, I mean, information coming based on, okay, let me quickly share this. There was a time that, okay, when ChatGPT first came up, if you type, tell me a story about nurse, about a nurse, you know, you are not saying maybe, a woman nurse, a man nurse. But the concept, I mean, is it, I, will, I, I will I say this now. The people that program it, they already program it to believe that it's only uh, women that work as nurse. So every time you ask something from ChatGPT about nurses, it will be using she, she. It will never use he. Why? Because of the bias of the programmers. But later, I think someone submitted something on that and it was revisited. Now it uses different. So it's evolving. It's evolving. And I want us to understand that. Thank you so much, uh, Amariah, for helping us with that again. So now we are on Cloud AI. Now I will not be going into prompt, prompt, prompt so that we don't waste our time. Uh, but I will just tell us some features about Cloud AI. Cloud AI, you don't need to pay before you upload. So you can upload document that is less than 10 MB. Now, this one, what you just have to do is look for the document. For example, I love, I lo I love to share this with teachers. If you are working in a school, okay, I have a question. Can we use ChatGPT for research paper? Please keep that question to the end of the session. We will talk about everything. All our questions are being compiled by uh, one of our officials, and we will talk about everything. Now, I used to share this with teachers. If you are working in a, in a school where your students type homework and they return it on maybe Google, on LMS, any learning management system, or on Google Classroom, I will suggest that the first thing you need to do is, please, before you upload it, remove the student's name. Hmm? So whatever in document, don't let it have anyone's name. No name must appear there. Then upload there. You can now say, give me uh, one paragraph feedback on this document. If I drop this now, it won't give me any information because I have not uploaded any document here. But let's just see what happened. Unfortunately, without the actual document provided, I'm unable to give feedback on it. Please share the text, image, or file. Okay, I think, let me see if I can use this image. There's an image here, okay. It's an image of AI and human being shaking hand. What can you say about this image? Interestingly, I've never done this on cloud, but let me see what happened. The image portrays a futuristic technological concept 
depicting the interaction between humanoid, artificial intelligence, or you can see that. So you can quickly upload something and get your feedback. Also, there, it has its own limitation, but I can tell you, use it reasonably and you will love it. Sometimes I will use, I use it a lot and they will say, oh, hey man, we are gonna block you till 7 p.m. So they will put me on hold for like one hour. So they do, I mean, Cloud AI does that a lot. So if you are gonna use it, prepare for that. Then another thing I might want to tell us is, but if you don't want to experience that, maybe you will subscribe to Pro. So when you subscribe to Pro, then you will see uh, that function. Let's see something. Can it create image? Can you create similar image? No. I'm sorry, but as an artificial intelligence model, I do not have the capa capability. But guess what? I'm telling you the features it has. Now, Cloud AI cannot create image for us. ChatGPT could not create image for us, even though we didn't try, I've, I've done that, but it can create if you upgrade to Pro. So as a teacher, we don't have money to upgrade to Pro. Cloud AI also doesn't do that for us. Now let's look for one that can create. So if you are working in the school where you use projector and you want to project images for your students, why not let us try Google Gemini? Google Gemini, as soon as I get it, because I have logged in already, it welcomed me. And you will see it already gave us some prompt. Suggest an organized list of the best food spots in a city. Help me pick a movie to watch based on a genre. Now, let me quickly say something about Google Gemini. Google Gemini has faced a lot of backlash based on biases and a lot of things. So they've been changing and updating. So initially, when Google Gemini started, as at January this year, I think I still use Google Gemini to generate image, lovely image. If you, if you, if you remember around December, there are some interesting, lovely AI pictures that went viral all over social media. I did some of them through Google Gemini, but all of a sudden it stopped. Why? Because it generated a very wrong image and they took them up. I think they took them to court. I can't remember the story around February or March, no February. So because of that, they limited how Google Gemini can create image. But let's see, can you create a, Somebody talk about grade five, right? A grade five class environment. That's not a good prompt because I didn't put it there that it should be image, right? So let's be specific. Can you create an image of a grade five class environment? Let's see what happens. Sure. Here is an image of a grade five classroom environment. Let's see. Voila, we are here. So you just created that. So you can just copy this if you like it, but I don't like this. Let's check another one. This is a bit colorful. Mm, I love this, it's simple. And it has the map of Africa, if I get it right. Uh, I love this. It looks like a two school, 30 million school, right? Okay, let's let's go to the next one. Uh, what can we do with this image? Make it more, okay, colorful with flowers. Absolutely. Is always a good messenger. You won't say no. I mean, it won't say no. So you see, we have flowers in the classroom now, but the but the flowers are weird. <laughs> the flowers without roots, right? So you are seeing the limitation of AI now. I think this is a bit better, but this one, these ones are growing from the roof, rooftop MC. All right, I love this one. This one like paint, it looks like painting. Now, let's try something. And I want to see if it will do that for us. 
make okay put some students in the class now this is where i usually have issue by the time you are can you see now by the time you are going into things that would delve into the privacy of the children AI yeah, will say, don't implicate me. Don't implicate me. Now, Google Gemini could not do this for us, right? But Google Gemini could help us to do some funny, funny caricature drawing like that. Because of the limitation of Google Gemini, I want to take us to another one, which is Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft Copilot. I love this one. I love this one. You know why I love it? Now let's go into it. I use it a lot. If you came across some of our flyers for this training, this is where we generated the images. Now, let's start like this. Create, now, this is not only for image. Everything you did on ChatGPT that you did on cloud, you can do here as well. But I'm trying to not go into those prompts again, not to be repeating the same thing. But how about saying, uh, what is, okay, let's say in French, bonne nuit. Good night, right? Bonne nuit. It says, that means good night in French. If you have any other question or need anything, feel free to ask. So, create, uh an image of nigerian teachers holding flags in their classroom that's weird right that's it all right Let's see Nigerian teachers. I hope we'll be well represented by this. Woo! <laughs> Can you see AI? Can you see what AI has given to us as Nigerian teachers? So you can see the bias of AI now. It gives us more of white teachers here. How many of you had white teachers growing up? <laughs> so you see the issue with AI now and this teacher looks like messy alright let's leave that one for another time <laughs> so uh, that is interesting to see but I can say uh, make the teachers black no no let's just say black uh, okay, let me just put that. So I'm I'm going to stop with co-pilot here so we can go to the last one. Uh, okay, thank you. I love the way Morayo is giving me this uh, nice. Aha. So I think now we are coming home. <laughs> we are coming home. At least... We have, this This guy looks like one of my Ghanaian friends. Uh, yeah, we are coming home. But I still see bias there. I still see some biases. So you may want to refine and refine and refine and refine until you get what you want. Remember our framework, create AI. So anytime you are doing that, always uh, understand this. So let's say, add some students in the background, in the classroom. Yes, it is, ed it is editable using Pixel. So you can go uh, deeply into that and do some editing. But most of the time, I don't edit. I can't even remember if I've edited before. I just refine my, yeah. I think I love this more. Yes. If I'm going to work on a project and I've been looking for pictures, this is what I would take. Because I want my teacher to be this beautiful with Nigerian gilly. I mean, heck tight. All right, thank you so much. So I'm done with this. I don't want to spend too much. So like I said, everything you can do on those ones we have mentioned, you can also 
do here. And you can see you can upload, you can add image here too. All right, let's go to the last one, which is magic school.ai. Oh, you will love this one. Even the appearance alone is wow. Now, I came across magic. I told her that I was at a conference in March this year and I attended a session after my own session. That was where the presenter presented this wonderful tool to us. And I was so happy. So since then, I've been looking forward to a day I will share it with other teachers. You know, the interesting thing about this one is you may not need to look for prompt. They already integrated the prompt for you. So, for example, you want to generate a song for your class. By the way, I love singing in my class. One of the things I used to engage my students is we sing like our life depends on it. And sometimes I compose songs. So, for example, if I'm out of song, I can just come here. So what grade? We are going to, I think I was teaching fourth grade some time ago. So we can say song topic will be Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Okay. Joy of Mother's Day. I don't know if that my English is correct. Joy of Mother's Day. So let's come to details of the song. Make it beautiful. I don't know what to say. <laughs> For my mom to love it. But it's for the student, actually. So you can put the artist's name. So who is your favorite artist? You can put anyone's name. So I love, if I want to go into uh, this, my students, I love to use Beyonce for them. Or I use, uh, which other one? Uh, I'm, I'm so bad with that. So they will be the one that will suggest. But let's just stick with Beyonce. And let's generate the joy of Mother's Day. We have verse one, pre-chorus, chorus, verse two, pre-chorus, chorus. And you can imagine. And you have it. But this is too much for me. So I can come back and say, make it shorter. You see that prompt? I don't want it too much. Make it shorter. Did you see that? As simple as that. So now that is one. Let's look at this. Professional email. So my name is Stephen. And I receive an email. Uh, okay. Generate a professional email communication to colleagues and other professionals. You don't need to tell too much. Just say email about school closing on May 27. If you are from Nigeria, you understand that, right? So just send. And let's see what we will have. Hello, colleagues. I hope this message finds you well. I wanted to inform you that our school will be closed on May 27th due to reason, blah, blah, blah. So you will edit that. Please make sure to communicate this information to the students and their parents and also update any necessary schedule or assignment accordingly. So this is good for administrators, right? Maybe as a principal. Uh, so you want to email family. Generate a professional email communication to families and translate into multiple language languages. So let's say it's from Steven. Include specific details include weather day is next week. <laughs> Bad prompt, right? But let's see what will happen. 
I hope this email finds you well. I just wanted to send you a quick reminder that our weather day is coming up next week on blah, blah, blah. It's always fun and informative event for the students. And we are looking forward to see. So you see, just explore. So I will not go into, see, we have many of them here. Many of them, many of them, many of them, many of them. So you can see songwriting, thank you notes, gift suggestion, uh, worksheet generator, Magic School for Student Idea, Multiple Choice Assessment. So let me quickly do this. For which grade? Let's go to university because I know we have some uh, professor here. University, you are teaching 400 level students and uh, you are teaching them about education. No. How economy of Nigeria is affecting the education let's see i don't know how i got here <laughs> so permit my bias so interestingly we already generated and it will give you your answer key now i can tell you that if you go through all this you might not like some of them your prompt will help you to change it again and again and again i'm trying to round up now because I think I've talked too much. <laughs> so you can also generate rubric. You can generate professional email. We've done that. Academic content, IEP generator, text dependent, student work feedback. So if you want to give feedback on your student work, uh, text summarizer, text leveler, please take your time after now and explore. So for maths teacher, you can see multiple explanation, 5e model lesson plan, vocabulary based text, real world connections. So a lot of things will be there. So maybe you want to be a creative teacher and you want to be generating code for every day. So today there is a code that your student will talk. Tomorrow they will talk about another one. Just come here. It will be so interesting for you to use. Now, maybe you are a teacher that you are you are high school teacher that you are preparing your student for to study abroad, SAT reading practice. You can generate a lot of practice SAT reading test that has passed. Okay, let's let's quickly use that. Um, SAT reading practice test, generate. All right, so Vuhala, we have it. With this few points of mine, <laughs> I hope I've been able to con con convince you and not to confuse you that AI has come to stay and it is for your benefit and my benefit as educators. However, it is important for us to use it reasonably and uh uh, responsibly and meaningfully. Now, I will quickly do something. Uh, excuse me. Now, like I mentioned, it is important for us to use AI meaningfully and responsibly. Please understand that AI is not human. It is its only work based on what exists on the internet. Exercise caution with your data. Don't put your credit card, business address. Some of these things, they are not really secured. Please, let's understand that there is important, uh, there, there is importance in personal effort. AI will not do all of, all of this for us. So don't let us see AI as... Yes, I'm not going to work again. You know, I mentioned that we were writing, we were writing like 15 lesson plan for three weeks, right? Now I have AI. Oh yeah, let me just go and sleep. AI, keep writing. No, please don't let us see that way. Put your own effort. I always say something. There is a way that I will read what you write if I know you and I will know that this is Adebola. Adebola wrote this thing. Oh, Moriah wrote this thing. If there's a way I will be so close to Morayo that if Morayo now uses AI, I will detect it because there is something we call unique voice. So, for example, Morayo, anytime you are talking, you always say, 
as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact. And I've been seeing that in your writing. Because you are in a hurry, you now use AI. And after finishing first paragraph, second paragraph, I didn't see as a matter of fact, Moriah, you didn't write this thing. AI must have revealed this to you. <laughs> so please don't let us give everything to AI. AI is supposed to support, not replace our personal efforts. Let your prompt contain who you, I mean, who your students are. Like I mentioned, second grade, fifth grade, university. The output of prompt is as, is as meaningful as the input. Avoid overcomplicated prompt. Ensure your prompts align with your objective. I mentioned that it must be relevant to what you are teaching. Understand your student needs to be able to tailor your prompt. Like I mentioned at the beginning, Maslow before Bloom. We all know Maslow theory, I mean, hierarchy of needs, right? Then Bloom taxonomy of objectives. Then last one, ignite critical thinking and develop creativity. So when AI gives you something, when AI gives you lemon, make lemonade out of it. Thank you so much. Over to you, Adebola. <laughs>